Good morning. Well, I got to the farm a little early today. We've got some beans to spray. If you missed yesterday's video, we spent most of the time scouting and finding out that we have aphids really bad in our soybeans. Well, I shouldn't say really bad. They're getting really bad. They're not horrible yet, but they're gonna be. Um, I, my wife and I are leaving later here this morning to go to a meeting down in Columbus. So I decided I'd get here early and try and get, uh, get one load of this insecticide sprayed out on the worst field that I found yesterday. And then uh, we'll do the rest when I get back tomorrow. So I pulled the sprayer up. We are loading it up. Um, when I talked to the chemical rep yesterday, I asked him what kind of water rates we need to use, hoping that we could use low rates with this insecticide to cover a lot of acres in a hurry. He said you still need really good coverage, so we're still going to run it um, uh, 15 gallons to the acre. And I should probably change my nozzles back to my twin twin jet um, nozzle instead of the singles we were using for Roundup. So I'll do that before we uh, start spraying. And uh, the chemical that we're using is this Lambcap 2. It's a pyrethroid insecticide. Basically, it's generic Warrior 2, if you know what that is, made by the same company. It's the exact same thing, just in a different label. Um, okay, so here's the thing about insecticide. While this one isn't that dangerous, it is, but it's not a skull and crossbones chemical, insecticides are not fun to spray. And uh, dad doesn't like doing it. It makes him feel just not good, not right. I have never really sprayed insecticides. I don't really want to do it, but we have to to kill these aphids. So sometimes I get a little lax in my PPE. I'll admit that. Now with this stuff. I've got my gloves. I've got my respirator, and I'm gonna wear that anytime I've got that jug open and I'm handling it. I'm gonna put basically all of the water in and then dump the chemical in just to limit my exposure as much as possible. Okay, I filled the tank up on the sprayer, but I did not dump the chemical in yet. We gotta switch all these nozzles, so I got it unfolded so I can go through and do that first. are changed and I dumped the jug chemical in. Uh, I might have to wipe my windows down. So uh, yeah, I've got the heat on today. All right, well, we're going to start with the plot here. These 30 inch rows, these beans look like they are just sopping wet from the dew. So I hope I don't have to get out for any reason. Um, but yeah, we're going to start here. I am going to stay sort of far away from the house where I spray though. Because I don't, I don't want, I don't want anybody getting close to it, working on the house, you know. Done. All right. So we did uh, almost 13 acres out of a little over 15 minutes here. Like I said, I stayed away from the house. Um, we're trying really hard not to run over any more beans than we already have with the fungicide pass. So I stayed right in the same tracks, did the exact same pattern, and everything. Um, did a fairly good job of that, but. Uh, the other thing with this uh, insecticide, the use rate on it is super low. Like with the Roundup, we sprayed a quart or I guess 22 ounces to the acre with some of it. The fungicide that we used, the rate was 13.7 fluid ounces per acre. The insecticide is one and a half ounces per acre. Like it's a tiny little amount that we're actually spraying. So, uh, for example, for for reference, I dumped one gallon of chemical into the sprayer. That will spray 85 acres, um, and so we're we're doing yeah. Easy math when you can dump the whole jug in at once, and you don't have to measure and everything. Got that first load sprayed out. That's all I've got time for today, Maddie, and I got a meeting with our uh, electrician and our builder down at our house. So, I'm gonna go do that. Uh, one more thing I did want to say. Uh, about spraying this insecticide though. Um, 
I, I'm not going to be able to do it all this way, but spraying early in the morning like this or later in the evenings um, is also good for some of the beneficials or not, I guess not necessarily beneficial to the soybeans, eh, sort of, but um, bees is what I'm getting at. So the bees are not as active in the early mornings or in the evenings, and therefore they're not out in the soybean fields. So uh, they're not there when we sprayed. Now, I can't sit here and tell you that we're not going to kill any bees because this chemical will get them, but we'll try and minimize it and keep it, you know, as little non-intended damage as possible. Okay, well, we had a real good walkthrough with our electrician trying to figure stuff out. It took about an hour and a half to uh, figure out where all the lights are going to go, where all the switches are going to go, where all the plugs are going to go. Whew, there was a lot there. But we got it figured out, so um, my wife is taking the boys to the babysitters for the day. They're, my mother-in-law is going to come pick them up for tonight, so they're staying with them. And uh, then I'm going to pick her up, and we're heading off to Columbus. <laughs> all right, so after a long day of learning all about Golden Harvest and our seed meetings, they treated us to top golf. There's my wife. Ooh, not the one you wanted on camera, honey. But now it's my turn, so I think she's gonna film me. It's gotta be legit. We gotta get his name in here. Show him in all of his glory. Oh, it is. <laughs> no pressure. I know, right? It's just going on YouTube. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. wasn't half bad. Look at that. It's almost, almost like I know how to do this. Apparently, if you hit the ball all the way to the back in those little square holes, you get points for that. Who knew? All right, it's agronomist Wade's turn. Oh, Wade, that was your moment of glory. <laughs> Did yours make it? On YouTube, it's going to look way Yeah, yeah. Maddie gets to redeem herself. <laughs> There you go. All right, do it again. Oh, see, she got six points out of it. I did horrible. Oh. I did okay. I got a 163 or 166, I think it said. It's, it's gone, but first place on our uh, little group over here. Well, turns out I'm pretty good at golfing. Who knew? Anyway, Top Golf was fun. 
we had a good day. Learned quite a bit, um, but it's bedtime. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning again. Well, our meeting's over. Heading home. Good morning, honey. So, three hour drive home, but when we get home, um, back to scouting for aphids and going to look around. I've, I've gathered some new information in the last day I'll share with you when we get back to the farm. All right, I made it back to the farm. We had a great meeting yesterday. It was so nice to be able to have that kickoff meeting in person. Um, you know, after last year, they tried to do it virtual and that was awful. I did not enjoy that at all. Um, this was much better. Even the last two or three years before that, they didn't really have a big statewide kickoff meeting like this. They had done more local ones. And so this was really nice to see some people that I hadn't seen for a long time and just get uh, kind of re-energized about seed stuff. You know, I've, I've kind of been down a little bit on the uh, seed selling side of stuff for various reasons, but uh, yeah, I, I feel good about it. If you're one of my customers or somebody that I've been trying to sell seed to, I'm sorry, but I'm coming for you. Yeah. I say that kind of jokingly, but no, seriously, Golden Harvest is a great company to sell for. We have outstanding products. The people that I work with on the company side of things are fantastic, and uh, I'm really excited about it. So enough of that. Uh, let's talk about aphids a little bit. So when I left yesterday morning, which was earlier in this video, we had just sprayed a load of insecticide for some aphids. And um, I want to go out and scout some more to look and see what aphid populations look like where we sprayed and where we haven't sprayed and see what's happening. Um, but I got a few questions on that last video that I want to answer and I've got some more information that I have found out over the past 24 hours that may affect some stuff a little bit. So first up, I had several people comment on that video about buying ladybugs in order to control our aphids that we have. And yes, ladybugs eat aphids. They do a great job of that. And I wish that we had more ladybugs around to eat the aphids so that I wouldn't have to worry about spraying them. But let's look at the the the, the economics or the, the math on it, right? So somebody found a link that said an a, a ladybug can eat about 50 aphids per day. That's fantastic. In an acre of soybeans, we have roughly 150,000 soybean plants. We plant 160,000. Let's just use 150 for easy math. So if we have 150,000 plants and each one of those plants has 100 aphids on it, and each ladybug can eat 50 aphids. That means that it would take one ladybug two days to clean off one plant. And if we wanted to get rid of the aphids in 10 days, you would need, you would need basically 100 and you would need 30,000 ladybugs per acre to kill off the aphids per acre times that by a thousand you can quickly see where it's just not a uh something that's scalable it'll work for your garden maybe but it's not something we can scale and buy enough of i did look you can buy ladybugs um, but the most I found, or one thing, was a hun uh, was you could buy eighteen thousand of them for a hundred and forty dollars. That's that's pretty pricey when you start talking three hundred bucks an acre to get enough ladybugs to uh, kill off the aphids. When I can spray it for a dollar and a quarter, so not a viable option. So yesterday I uh, sent some pictures of my ladybugs. Well, I called uh, an agronomist that I have worked with in the past. Uh, he's from Michigan because he's got more experience with some of this aphid stuff that um, we have dealt with years and years ago. And so I talked to him and said, hey, what do you know? What, what do you think about my situation here and stuff? And he said, why don't you send me some pictures? Tell me what you're seeing. And uh, he forwarded those pictures on to uh, entomologist at Michigan State, uh, Chris Defonzo. And she replied to him and basically said, nothing to worry about, that low number of aphids, low number of aphids at 150 per plant, um, were not 
yield limiting and that at the R1 to R2 growth stage, which we are past, it would take upwards of 600 or 660, I think was what she said, aphids per plant to cause economic injury. And at later growth stages where we are now, it would that number moves upwards of a thousand. She also said that dewy mornings and some of the wet conditions that we were seeing was perfect for getting the fungus and diseases that kill aphids. Not only does fungus and diseases and white mold kill my soybeans, it also, different diseases, can kill the, the aphids and the predators or the, the, the bad things for the plants. So that's good news, right? That means, oh, maybe we don't need to spray and we should be a little bit more patient. But on the other hand, I had some people from North Dakota, Minnesota area reach out to me and say, yeah, we deal with this every year. If it gets over 100 per plant, you need to spray. You've got to be out there. I tend to think that the universities are a little bit overly cautious and not necessarily... Um, I'm trying to be careful here, but I don't necessarily think they always have the farmer's best interest in mind, kind of. Uh, and I get that there is, you know, IPM, integrated pest management practices, where you, you don't spray unless you need to, uh, trying to prevent resistance and stuff. But we haven't sprayed for aphids in 15 years. We aren't going to create resistance from one application here. So um, I take the Michigan State advice with a grain of salt, is what I'm trying to tell you. And I don't think that we can withstand 500 aphids per plant and still be okay. So, um, I'm out in the plot. This is the field, one of the fields we sprayed yesterday. I wanted to look at and see if we killed them. The re-entry re -entry interval on the insecticide we sprayed is 24 hours. It's been more than 24 hours, so it's perfectly safe for me to be out here. I'm just gonna look around a little bit. Well, right off the bat with some bad news, not aphids, but look at this, white mold in my soybean plot in 30 inch rows that you guys were all so confident, not all of you, some of you were so confident would fix my problems, more white mold, great, great, that's super fantastic, there's more white mold, <sighs> I haven't found any aphids yet though. All right, well, I counted like five or six on this plant. So we didn't kill them all. Most of them were towards the lower canopy where maybe we didn't get quite as good of chemical penetration. Um, that insecticide should have some residual a little bit. So it's possible that some of them will die still, if they, especially if they move around at all. Um, but we definitely knocked them back big time, which is good. So... <sighs> We'll keep an eye on stuff and uh, and watch it some more. Now let's go look at some fields that that um, we haven't sprayed yet and see how much worse they are today. So this field of beans is the one that I was spraying um, yesterday morning when I ran out. So basically I did around the outside over here, but I didn't make it over to this end of the field. So I'm gonna walk out here a ways, ignore all the beans dying of white mold and see how many aphids we've got once we get far away from what has been sprayed so that we don't have any chemical or you know if we get an accurate picture that's what we're looking for oh that's not pretty see all those dead beans There's a big pocket of white mold here not pretty at all oh gosh just keeps going oh gosh I don't even know if these are worth spraying. Ah, it's gonna get worse. Bad deal. Well, on that plant that I just tore apart, there was 137 aphids. When I was out there in the field looking at them, I didn't think it was that many, but I thought I'm gonna take one back and count it. And they're just, they're everywhere. They're spread out. They're not all concentrated at the top of the plant. So there's more there than you think. So there's another factor that we have to consider when we're making this decision to spray or not to spray, and that's the weather and the weather forecast. Aphids do not like heat, and so when we start to push temperatures up over 85 to 90 degrees, they slow down their reproduction drastically. I still have not gotten a good answer on whether or not high temperatures will actually kill the aphids off, 
or if it just keeps them from exploding in population. Either way, this weekend things are supposed to turn hotter. Depending on which forecast you look at, either in the upper 80s or, according to the One News Channel from Toledo, 90 to 95 for the next five or six days. So do I wait and hope that the aphids slow down and I don't have to worry about them getting out of hand? Do I trust that 600 to 1,000 per plant is really the economic threshold? Do I not spray because we've got white mold that's going to take the bean yield away anyway and it's pointless to go out and spray? Or do I do everything that I can to protect the yield that I do have because beans are still $13 this fall, they look really good, and the chemical to do it cost me $1.25 an acre. Okay, so I've looked at some more fields, there's aphids. There may not be 150 on a plant everywhere, but there are aphids everywhere. I know this hot weather is coming and gonna slow them down, but when I look at the cost benefit analysis, the risk reward, whatever you wanna call it, it cost me $1.25 an acre in chemicals to go spray them. And I know running the sprayer is not free, but it doesn't cost me very much. Like to the point where a third of a bushel is gonna cover this. So do I think that those aphids and other insects out there are gonna cost me more or less than 20 pounds of seed of beans per acre? 20 pounds, that's all it takes to pay for this. We're gonna spray them. Maybe not all of them, but um, I'm gonna do a couple more loads this afternoon. We're, we're gonna spray. Back in the sprayer. This is actually the second load. I didn't film anything in the first one because you guys have seen me spraying lots and lots. All right, I got that second load sprayed out here, which is really the third load of the insecticide. Uh, I don't have enough water to spray another one, so I'm gonna take a little break here. All right, well, while I'm waiting on some water, I wanna go scout some corn. I wanna see what our leaf diseases are doing, see if there's a difference between the fungicide, the sprayed stuff and the non-sprayed stuff, and just get a feel for things a little bit. So I'm gonna start out here. Um, this is right behind the farm. This corn has been some of my absolute best looking stuff from day one. This was the first fields of corn we planted. It was like the 18th of April before we got that snow when everybody told me, don't plant, don't plant, don't plant. Um, but it came up and it looks really good. And I have given this a little bit of everything. Um, every time I had some um, foliar feed products, fungicide, this got V5 and tassel fungicide, and we put it all on this field and it shows. I mean, that is just enormous corn. It's tall, it's pretty healthy. We are starting to see a little bit of firing down here on the bottom. And we've got some leaves that are drying up. But those leaves aren't doing anything anymore anyway. Doesn't mean I like to see it, but not something I'm horribly concerned about. We've got a little disease. That's a northern corn leaf blight. But this is way down low. If you look up in the upper canopy, I don't see much for disease at all. Good grief, this corn has got to be 12 feet tall. So, that's good. Leaves look great. It's, yeah, let me pull an ear. This is not the biggest, bestest ear I have ever seen. Uh, it's 16 around, 41 long that pollinated. That'd be to right about there. These few kernels on the tip did not pollinate. Um, probably just good growing conditions where the ear just kept growing and we ran out of pollen. Um, but it's filling out, you can see, this is 111 day corn and we're already sweet corn stage on it, so that's good. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm really hoping we've got some 250 bushel dryland corn here, um, which would be awfully impressive. So we'll see. Uh, just looking from here up, I see a little bit of some, I believe that's gray leaf spot, fairly big lesions of it, um, but pretty minimal. And like I said, with the fungicide we put on, we should have controlled that. Ground conditions, still moist on top. It has been a solid, let's see, what's today? Today's Thursday, so it's been not quite two weeks. Uh, since we had that last big rain of three inches, there are places that are starting to get dry, but not right here. So this corn's had plenty of moisture, 
and uh, it looks looks really good. I found something cool. Trying to get to it to show you. Check it out. I found a spray plane. Not on our fields, but still cool. We're gonna watch. So he's here spraying for the dairy. Up over the electric line by about five feet. Dang, that's cool. So these cornfields are the, uh, like I said, they're the local dairies. They were planted a little bit later. You can see they still got fresh silks on them, so the timing is still okay. Most of our corn is uh, farther along than this. I am 95% sure this corn's all gonna get chopped uh, for silage. So, cool. I just, I was out scouting and I saw a plane. I'm like, oh, we gotta find it. Okay, one more time. We're gonna watch him go by one more time because I got on top of the hill where we can see quite a ways. Oh, that's cool. Okay, back to our stuff. So we're in a different field. This field has gotten no special treatment. Uh, it was some of our later planted stuff. This was. Uh, some of that oats and radish cover crop ground stuff. So it was, uh, like I said, a little bit later planted. Um, still moisture here. It hasn't dried out yet. And the bottom leaves, relatively the same thing. We've got some firing. We've got some stuff starting to burn up, but still pretty green. Not bad. Uh, as far as disease pressure goes, the top leaves are quite a bit more speckled. How bad it is, I don't know. All of these little lesions, for the most part, are gray leaf spot. There is getting to be a fair amount of it. I'm also seeing, I did, where did it go? Uh, some northern corn leaf blight, but I gotta find them. I just saw like three of them from the underside of the leaves. Right here's one. That is a small spot of northern. But uh, yeah, oh, well, no, that's not. Here's one. Long, uh, kind of rectangular or oval rectangular lesions on the leaves are northern corn leaf blight. The small uh, speckled stuff with a halo around it is more gray leaf spot. There's some northern right there. Basically anything that's killing off leaf tissue is bad because then that leaf cannot do any photosynthesis. And that means you can't produce Carbohydrates and sugars and all that good stuff. Oh, yeah, look at this leaf. That one is covered in northern. Can you see it? Get it in the sunlight. Yep. Yep. So, there's disease out here. I don't know how bad it is. We'll see if there's a yield difference in our sprayed versus unsprayed stuff. Um, but our corn here is a little bit farther along than that field we were just in. We've got some brown silks um, and some decent sized ears. I, it doesn't look bad. I'm not upset by this. So I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. Oh, I should get my microscope out. I brought it or my magnifying glass, but there's some little black specks on there. No, you can't see it. Uh, it's tar spot. Tar spot is a relatively new disease for us. They've had it in the west side of Michigan for a few years now. Um, but that could potentially be devastating. So something to keep an eye on. So I put my magnifying glass on the camera lens and trying to find one of them tar spots. And I think that's it right there. Um, you can also see some of the hairs on the corn leaves. All the little um, yellow things there are grains of pollen. But I think that black speck is tar spot. I'll find another one, see if it looks the same. Okay, well, I'm less sure about that last one after finding this one right in the center of the screen right there. Um, you're not supposed to be able to scratch tar spot off with your fingernail. That's one way to sort of tell what it is. The other one I could scratch off. This one I can't. That's a 16 by 46 here. It's got a little bit more length to it than the other one we looked at. You can see the kernels are a little whiter. Um, they're just not quite as developed and far along, but not that far behind for first versus last planted. I need to look up and see what maturity and what variety this is exactly. I jumped into another field while I was right across the road. Um, but this is 106 day corn. That last stuff we were in was 110 days. So, um, 
just curious to see. They were planted at the same time. There's a nice big spot of northern. Look at that. Uh, part of this field got sprayed at V5 early, um, but not where we're at. So no fungicide on this particular spot either. There we got a little bit of gray leaf spot right there. Yeah. For the most part, I think it looks relatively healthy. Okay, while I'm back, I had considered going to spray another load tonight, but it's 6 o'clock, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, we'll probably be spraying beans all day tomorrow. Is what it is. So I'm going to go pick some sweet corn and go home. All right. Thanks for watching today and yesterday. And, you know, today's video. That's both days. <sighs> spraying beans tomorrow, most likely. I don't know. We'll see what else is going on. I'm not sure. Brock said something about maybe coming tomorrow. I don't know if he's coming or not. Uh, Dad's been working on that barn down to Berkey. If I get caught up or I need a break, we're going to go drive around and try and find some seed customers maybe and, you know, start selling stuff for next year. Maybe. Maybe. But anyway, we'll uh, see you guys in the morning.